Hello and welcome back once again to the Pro Tipster Football Show. We're back with the Dream Team, baby. We have three Pro Tipster experts with me here on the show this evening and we're going to hit the Premier League, the Championship, Serie A and we've even got a little bit of the J League as well. We'll also be talking about the World Cup draw and why Germany loves young men and why England loves old ones. We're going to delve deep into the football markets to help you find value and learn more about betting on football. Gentlemen, I hope you're all well. Martin, how are you doing today? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very, very well. It started snowing here, so um, beware of any postponements this weekend in England. Orange ball, orange ball alert, orange ball alert. Pro tips are Dan, how are you? I'm oh, not too bad. It's not snowing. No, no, it is snowing, but it's not sticking. That's not sticking. And uh, pro tips are Johnny, how's it going? I'm doing very well. A lot of snow here as well, so we expect some <laughs> some first ball matches here as well, and hopefully with the orange ball we can play. Magic, magic! I miss the orange ball. Oh yeah, we need that back. I suppose we we kind of get a pink one now, don't we? Haven't seen an orange one in a while. Oh uh, yeah, right, lads. shiny, right, sir, Paddy? <laughs> I'm ancient, yeah. <laughs> right, uh, lads, let's get into the football because there's loads of matches to talk about that we that that we've picked that we want to talk about. The first one is the biggest one of the weekend. Uh, fourth place, Arsenal are taking on Man United, who are in second. Let me give you some stats then before I get your uh, previews and, and predictions. Arsenal have won 10 out of 10 home matches, and they've won by two or more goals in eight out of 10 uh, previous home matches. Man United have drawn the first half in six out of eight away games against the top six, against other top six teams. Well, I suppose they can't really draw against themselves, are they? Disregard that, <laughs> please, listener. Um, let's start with you, uh, Johnny. Actually, so Arsenal Manchester big game in England this weekend. Um, I will probably be against everyone else here, uh, here in this conversation, but I'm a big fan of under under 2.5 goals for the, for this game for various reasons. The obvious one: I expect Mourinho to have a defensive approach to this game, uh, despite the uh, what, how Manchester United play in the mid- midweek um, against Watford? Uh, I don't expect they can do as well offensively and have as much uh, as, as much luck as they had in the recent weeks scoring goals um, against Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal are not a defensive team, but again, this is a big game for them. Uh, going into the betting market and what we what I can see there. Value lies on, I would say, on Arsenal slightly, um, on on probably the the Asian handicap of zero is there. I can see a value of on on Arsenal there. Um, however, I have decided to go for the goals, so um, under two point five goals at one point eight on, on pro tips, sir. Um, it is not as high the odds as I would expect it. And I would wish for uh, under 2.5 goals, but I believe this, this game will not be a goal, goal thriller, and also providing the, what, what the weather what the weather is like. I suppose, yeah. Johnny, it'll probably, but the, the, the price will probably go up anyway the closer we get to the match, because a big match like this, with a lot of money coming in, it usually drives something like uh, overs down, doesn't it? Because people have a kind of romantic notions about these big games. They, they expect goals. Whereas sure. in fact, kind of sometimes it can be a lot. It can be smarter to put your money on under. So, so may, maybe your price will drift drift out, and you might get a better one closer to kick off. Yeah, exactly. It it can it can, it can very easily happen. Okay, uh, who's next then, Martin? Uh, what are you going for here? Um, I've actually gone slightly the other way. I've, I've I've gone for over one and a half Arsenal goals at two point one three. Now. It could be, it still could come in under two and a half, Arsenal could go on to win it to 2-0. Um, but the reason I've gone for that is, I've just been very impressed with the way Arsenal have been this season at home. Um, like you say, 10, 10 wins in a row. I mean, if you stretch back to last season as well, it's now 12 wins in a row at home. Um, the only thing for me is Lacazette's injured, um, so he's not going to be playing, which is a bit of a blow for Arsenal. But, you know, on the flip side, Matic got injured against Watford in midweek, so, I think that's potentially a bigger loss for United than Lacazette is uh, for Arsenal. Um, and yeah, San- Sanchez and Ozil played so well against Huddersfield. I did not... Ex- I expected... Don't get me wrong, I expected Arsenal to beat Huddersfield, but I didn't expect a 5-0 pin. Um, and I was very impressed with Ozil and Sanchez. And if they can get at that Manchester United defence, which I think they will, they're going to get... 
Um, I expect Jose Mourinho to try and not, maybe not park the bus as such and go for a nil-nil because he's got so much criticism of late for doing that. But I expect Arsenal to have more of the ball and it, it, test Man United's defence. And I'm not sure they're going to be able to cope with it. I think David Hay is going to have to be on, on form to keep him at bay because, um, you know, we've known Lucas as well. I expect, I would hope, uh, as a neutral, I'd like to see Welbeck play instead of Giroud because I think Welbeck can get in behind the, the United defence and cause them problems. Whereas if Giroud played, I think, you know, with Lindelof and, and Smalling, I think they've got enough to cope with the aerial threat. Um, so yeah, I've gone for over one and a half Arsenal goals. If you look at the last two games, between Arsenal and Man United at the Emirates, you know, United haven't scored. Arsenal won 2 0 and 3 0. Um, so it, it could well go the same way again. Um, but, uh, and Mourinho just, just, I don't know, he parks the bus and he just doesn't do anything against the top six away from home. Don't think he's won a game since, um, since he took charge of United against top six tired away from home. So, for me, I, I, I can see Arsenal running out winners by a couple of goals. I don't know if, uh, Dan, what, what's what's your take on it? Um, well, I, I I said earlier, um, and I agree with Thomas that I don't think there'll be goals in it. I've gone for Arsenal to win two point four eight. Um, nice. You look at Arsenal's home record; they've lost twice at home in the Emirates in the Premier League since the start of last season. That's twenty five games, and have won I think it's twelve at home consecutively. Manchester United have only won three away games this year. Swansea, Southampton and Watford uh, last game. Um, lost to Huddersfield, lost to Chelsea, drew with Liverpool, drew with Stoke. Um, I know Wenger's only beat Mourinho once and that was in a game though where it didn't really matter. But that sort of thing I think is, you know, I, I think this is a, a weaker Mourinho side than he's had previously. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're a good, they're a good team, you know, they, they deserve to be second. But it's a tough get. Going to the Emirates is a tough game, and this is one where it's all all about the mind games and all that sort of thing. Twelve thirty on a Sunday morning, a uh, Sunday afternoon. Sorry, um, mm. I just got a feeling it's going to be a, a tight, gritty one nil win to Arsenal. Um, I think Lacazette missing is one thing, but you look at the second half against Huddersfield. They brought Giroud on, and they ripped Huddersfield apart. The stupid thing is, I don't think Giroud will get the run um, in place of Lacazette. I think it'd be Welbeck. Mm. Because they'll be looking for pace uh, to get in behind the um, uh, Man U defence. And then, say if they're 1-0 up, um, with half an hour to go, bring on Giroud just to bat them at the end. He's officially better than Burkamp as well, you know that? Olivier Giroud. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so I tell you, he's, he's scored more goals now than, than Dennis Burkamp. And, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay, you've scored more than Dennis Burkamp, but there's no way you're any here better than Dennis Burkamp. Hey, Dan, you were telling me earlier that Sanchez, is he a doubt? Yeah, 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 um, Sanchez tweaked his hamstring slightly, that's why he's brought off. Yeah. And, uh, Wenger said he should be fine, but, you know, hamstring injuries and that sort of thing, they're a tough one. And you get a needle in a hamstring, you could be, um, I mean, Sanchez is a machine. Yeah, you know, he really is a machine, but um it is a slight doubt, a slight worry. And I, I saw a few Arsenal fans on their forums saying play Ramsey instead. And uh, I don't think Ramsey's <laughs> quite the same player. No. No. But um yeah, um it should be okay. It should be okay. If Matic is missing though. That's a big one for Manu. Really big player to miss. Um I think he's been the difference then this season. Yeah, there's gonna be a hole in, in midfield now where he should be patrolling. Yeah. Know. Who will come in instead? Is it Ander Herrera will take his place? Or Fellaini maybe? Uh, Fellaini. Yeah, Fellaini's a, Fel- a dead. Oh, Fellaini as well. Yeah, I think, I think it'll be Herrera. Yeah, it's gotta be that. I, I, well, I, I, I do have time for Her- Herrera though. I think he's a little bit of a terrier, you know? Causes trouble. I like him. In, in, in a way that I, I don't like Fellaini because he's, he's just a troublemaker. But, you know, Herrera, Herrera's kind of sly, and I like that in footballers, you know. Yeah, Fellaini's all hair and elbows. <laughs> hair and elbows, exactly. Right, lads, look, uh, before we leave this match then, I, I would, I would like a score prediction. So, uh, Daniel, you, you were last there, so. Um, if you yeah. had to pick a score. 1-0 Arsenal. Uh, Martin? Uh, um, I'm gonna go for 2-1 Arsenal. I was thinking 2-0, but I, I Lukaku's got to score sooner or later, so I'm going to 2-1. <laughs> and Johnny? 0-0. No, no. 
<laughs> then they... <laughs> <laughs> so Johnny's going to be going out when the match is on. He's not going to be sitting up and watching it. <laughs> <new. laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's move on then to another game we picked. Now, I suppose it doesn't look that exciting on paper, but there's a few things we want to speak about. Eighth place, uh, Watford, Watford are taking on seventh place Spurs. Uh, Spurs have won nine out of 13 away matches. Head-to-head wise, though, um, uh, three out of the last four games have been losses for Watford in their previous Premier League meetings. Uh, who, uh, who wants to go first on this? Maybe uh, Dan? I think it's a really tough one to call. Um, Spurs seem to be uh, spurting up their season nicely. Although, as we discussed in the weekend preview, it's nowhere near as bad as their dip in form last year. Um, Watford, um, consistently inconsistent. Um, they score goals, but they concede loads. They should have beaten Chelsea, couldn't hang on. Should have beaten Everton. Um, missed a penalty at the end. Uh, came back from 3-0 down to 3-2 against Man U. But couldn't get the equaliser and conceded a fourth. And I don't think they've got it uh, against Spurs. Um, you know, Spurs are going through a bit of a dip, but um, I'm just looking at the handicap line now, and I think it's 0.75 is about where the line is. And I couldn't back Watford um, plus 0.75, but I'm equally unsure about Spurs uh, minus on, uh, minus 0.75. So I'm struggling a bit with this one, and I kind of want to see what. Um, a little bit more about injuries and things like that before I go for it because it's a really, it should be a Spurs win. It should be a Spurs win, but I don't think I can trust them at the moment. Uh, Johnny, uh, uh, this is an interesting game. Um, I'm going with this one with Watford uh, on the Asian handicap of uh, plus one at uh, one point seven one. Uh, I kind of agree with uh, with Prodip Sedan. What for, what for the inconsist, inconsistent, uh, but so is, that's the worst purse at the moment. So it's, uh, I would, I would say it's hard to separate these two at the moment. Still, you would have expect, uh, in majority of matches for Spurs to win. Um, looking at the odds and the betting market, um, the looks, the odds look about right. So, uh, yeah, went for, Watford uh, not to lose by two. If they lose by one, uh, it's take back, uh, which covers the the scenario that Spurs will win by one goal. Uh, in, 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 in this one, actually, I would expect goals, not like the Arsenal uh, United one. So I might watch this one and then go out <laughs> when the Arsenal game is on. Johnny's buying the pints, lads. <laughs> Nice. Um, so, so, so the yeah. Oh, of course, the odds for goals for this game are lower, uh, influenced by by the midweek game that Watford played against Man United, probably uh, that they and what what Dan said that they concede quite easily. Also, they can actually score goals. Uh, Tottenham are knowing that they can score goals as well, but uh, recently they kind of uh, concede goals as well. So this looks about right. Anyway, to come back to the prediction, uh, Watford plus one. Very, very good. And Martin? Um, yeah, I'm kind of going, <laughs> I'm going completely the opposite way to, to Johnny, actually. I've gone for Spurs minus one on the Asian handicap at 2.15. And it's, it's one of those games, it's quite difficult to predict, but every, every team seems to have a bogey side. And for me, Spurs on Watford's bogey side, you know, they've lost the last seven in a row against Tottenham, and they haven't won against Spurs at Vicarage Road since 1987. That is that is a very, very long time. And like Dan said, you know, they're so Watford are so hit and miss, you don't know what Watford are going to turn up. And Spurs, yeah, they're in a bit of a mini rut, but again, as Dan said, they're not in as you know, as bad of a pickle as, as a lot of people make out. So let, let's say, Martin, that, that, that you're given you know, 10 or 15 million quid and you're Marco Silva. Who would you buy to uh, to give Watford a bit of experience? Oh, good God. Um, uh, it's a tough one. Who can he buy for 10, 15 million quid? Not, <laughs> not, many, not many people these days. Okay, maybe I'm a bit underpricing, but like... Okay, so for example, cause I, I was thinking, like, you remember uh, when... Um, when West Brom bought, uh, what's his name, Darren Fletcher, made a big difference to them. 
And I think I think Watford are kind of missing someone of the same kind of ilk. Yeah, you might be right there. Um, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know who who Watford should sign to get that sort of experience in. But I think you're right in the fact that they are missing. They are missing someone. Um, I just can't pinpoint who. I mean, Aurelio, Aurelio Gomez has done one at the back, but he's getting on a bit. Um, I mean, I, I do think if you're going to bring someone in for Watford, it does have to be someone in the middle of the park just to shore up shore up the midfield a little bit because the Cora or the Cora, however you pronounce it, is is good alongside Tom Cleverley, but you know that's they're not well beaters, so uh, I don't know. It's it's a tough one, but I agree. I think you have to bring someone in, but. Who do you bring in? Who would want to go to Watford? I don't know. <laughs> Someone from Uden, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, good point. Another Italian. Um, <laughs> well, Uden is your own by the same people, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. P- Pozzo family. Um, so, yeah, have a quick look in the Uden team, see if there's someone they could borrow there. <laughs> um, I, I think it's exact, that exact point that Watford lacked that, in, that experience that, for me, strengthens the fact that Spurs are going to win this one. Because I just think... I just think Spurs will have too much for Watford. Um, the only one thing, you know, Will Hughes as well, I think he's young, he's done well for Watford, but he's, he's now got a hamstring injury, so he's going to be missing. Um, they, I think they rely too much on Richarlison. If he doesn't play well, then Watford don't play well. Thanks for listening to the ProTipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Let's uh, move on then to uh, Leicester are playing Burnley. Leicester in ninth, Burnley in uh, lofty heights of six. Sixth, there have been uh, over 2.5 goals in 11 out of 19 away Burnley matches. And Burnley have drawn the first half. 12 out of 19 away matches. 2010, though, was the last time Burnley beat Leicester in a league meeting away from home. Uh, Johnny, any anything here that you saw? Burnley, for me, are, to say, the, the, the one of the most positive surprises of the season. Someone living out of uh, out of UK looking at the matches uh, in the Premier League. Uh, Leicester are doing pretty well for me. Uh look, looking at the at the market. Uh yeah, the author probably said about right. Uh to me it's difficult to judge here if if we can see some goals or not. So what I've gone for is uh Barnley not to lose and half stakes lost if Barnley lose by one. So it's Barnley plus zero point seven five and the author one point eight three. Uh Leicester are yeah, for me they're just inconsistent team uh in in, in terms of betting on, on them or uh, covering the handicap. Uh whereas uh Barney are a team that uh are able to surprise big teams or well the big teams. Uh they are they are capable of surprising away from home. Um zero point seven five handicap on them is, is quite fair. It might not be, not be uh, too much value, but but it's, it's, it looks about right. So I've gone I've gone for this pick. Uh, I, I honestly I expect to draw. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, Martin. Martin, did you see anything here? Interesting. Um, I wasn't too much, but I've actually just gone for for a plain Leicester win at one point seven six. I've gone against Johnny a little bit. Um, I just. I don't know, Burnley have had such a great start to the season. Now, it's quite funny, I actually saw earlier on that there's a pub in Burnley that will change their name to the Deich pub if if they get into Europe. <laughs> um, which I thought was quite funny. Brilliant. But I can't, I can't see that happening. The bubble's got to burst sooner or later. Um, they're, don't get me wrong, they're doing well in sixth place, but they've only scored 14 goals. It's their defence that are getting them, getting them the points. And... I think Leicester have hit form at the right time. You know, they they started pretty poorly, got a new manager in place, and Puel is actually, you know, bringing the best out of Leicester again. And Vardy's goal against Spurs in midweek was unbelievable. Um, Vardy and Mahrez look like they've hit form at the right time. And for me, I don't, I'm just not sure Burnley are going to cope with, with those two. So I've actually gone for the Leicester win. 
Fair enough. Dan, did you see it in here? Yeah, I was just going to ask Martin if he thought Ma- um, they've done the right thing moving Maris up front. If that's made the difference in the team. Cause yeah, it's, it's huge. Um, yeah, I think it's been a, a massive positive. And Maris looks happy in his football again, which is great to see. Because he, he was unbelievable in the title winning season. And it was a shame that he, you know, weren't, weren't so great a following season. But it looks like he's, he's happy with his, with his game again. Yeah, I've got to agree. And I think it's, uh, led them to play Dimmy Gray. Um, expert in City Winger. He's another class player. Yeah, he is. He's stepping up a gear. I think he's, um, he, he's pushing on to be in the England squad for a World Cup. Jimmy Gray is personally. Um, I've, I've, I've kind of gone with what Johnny did. Um, I've gone Bernie not to lose. So Bernie plus half at 2.08. And I know what you're saying about the bubble's got to burst. So I've just looked, I've just been looking through the history books and the last time Bernie finished top six. 1974. <laughs> so just before you were born, Paddy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm making that joke for. I'm older than you. You're older than I am. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, like, people saying, you know, Leicester have hit form. Like, they've only lost once in the last uh, five, six, wow, last uh, eight games, but they've drawn four of them. Yeah. Um, You know, and you look at their home form, and, yeah, they've beaten Everton, they've beaten Spurs, obviously, but... um. Drew with West Brom, lost to Liverpool, um, lost to Chelsea, and lost to Man City, I guess. That's a lower ball. Beat Brighton. But it, it, it's a bit patchy, you know? And Burnley's away form. I mean, Burnley's form in general is unreal. They've won four of the last five games. Um, you know, which just... I, I can't get my head around it. They've won three of the last four <laughs> away. And you're right, they don't, apart from Man City, they don't concede goals. They don't score many, but they don't concede goals. So the, the, the safe bet, I think, is under two and a half. And it's probably yeah. really poorly, um, really poorly valued. But, um, I've gone for Burnley not to lose. I think it'll be a draw. But, uh, I like having the insurance of having, if, if Burnley sneak a win. Um, and I'm all for it. I, I really want Burnley to finish top six because I think Sean Dyche is a good manager and I think it's just a, um, it's, it's something we're going to come to. This 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 revolution needed with younger managers. I think it's really important um, because um, there was a tweet, wasn't there, about um, Allardyce, Pardew, um, yeah, Hodgson, Moyes. Moyes that's yeah. it. Yeah, and they're just dinosaurs. Um, maybe maybe not so much Moyes, but um, you know, it, it's um, Premier League teams trying to m- make sure they don't go down. But it's not about achieving anymore. It's about making sure they don't go down. Mm. Whereas mm. I think Burnley have built up a team um, over the last couple of years. Like they've been steadily adding to it, steadily improving, sticking with the manager, and it's paying dividends and it's wonderful. And I'd like to see more of that. Mm. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, we'll come back to the to, to, the, to that conundrum uh, in a few moments. But one more Premier League uh, match. Um, Sorry to do this to you, Martin. I know you're probably Brilliant. sick of talking about West Ham on, <laughs> on this podcast, but uh, yeah, Man City are taking on West Ham on Sunday. Uh, the only really interesting thing I saw here was there have been over two and a half goals, ten out of fourteen away West Ham match. So leaky defence alert. <laughs> uh, Man City were um, well. I've been impressed with them for sure. Anyway, but especially in the last couple of matches because it shows they have they have a real backbone. And they're, yeah. they're they're just so determined to win. Like they could have they could have taken a draw last night against Southampton and just said, "Ah, well, sure, you know, at least we didn't lose." But no, they kept that. And then, uh, yeah, Raheem Sterling is he's like Maradona at the minute. He's a stat for you, Raheem Sterling. Here we go. Raheem Sterling has scored the winning goal in the 84th minute or later in four different competitive games Ugh. for Man City this season. Including each of their last three games. <laughs> so, Raheem oh. Sterling, last goal scorer. Last goal scorer, yeah. <laughs> Martin. Well, um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to back this one, <laughs> personally, <laughs> but if, if I was going to say go for anything, I mean, I was looking at, on the Asian handicap, City are going to batter us, um, minus 3.25 on the Asian handicap at 2.44. I was actually looking, um, we don't we don't cover the correct score markets on Pro Tipster. However, looking at the bookies markets, City are actually shorter to win seven nil than we are to win one nil. <laughs> <laughs> that is so that proves, you know, Ouch. just how 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 much hope we have. I mean, you know, in the past we've won a couple of games at City, but 
it's a different Manchester City, and we've we've got absolutely no chance. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not happening. Unfortunately, we're not we're not getting anything out of the game. So, yeah, minus three point two five, maybe even go high if you can. What was it you were mm. saying about um Ogbonna, the defender? Um, because uh, Mendy ran on, didn't he, when Sterling scored to get a selfie with him? And you said, I th- think you said to me earlier that Mendy ran ran more than Ogbonna has this season for West Ham. <laughs> yeah, he's just uh, Ogbonna's. He's getting a lot of stick. Um, you know, I've, I've jumped on that one and probably a little bit harsh, but he, he's he's not played well recently, and we just need to sort it out at the back. It's just it's just not it's just not working. Moyes, we 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 thought it would change under Moyes, but it's just exactly the same. Um, I mean, we got battered by Everton last night, yes, but if Lanzini had scored that penalty, it could have changed. It seems to be, if we score a goal, we actually up our tempo and start playing quite well, but if we can't, if we don't score, we, we end up getting battered. Yeah, the result, the result against Everton, I thought, was, was, was a, wasn't was a very fair reflection at all. I was watching it, and second, the second half, West Ham started off really well. They had a good 15, yeah. 20 minutes there, and, you know... Uh, I was just thinking that this is going, this is too, too, that's too all written all over because everything, they were on the ropes, they really were like, and then uh, Rooney scored that wonder goal and that was that. Ridiculous. Yeah, 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 that was that. Uh, Johnny, did you see Atten in, in this match at all? Uh, I'm, comp- I'm, I'm against uh, Martin again. Uh, <laughs> I'm usually against, da- against Dan, but th- this time it's against Martin uh, <laughs> with his predictions. Uh, I see absolutely crazy value on West Ham. Really? Uh, I mean, the odds, yeah, the odds reflect uh, how City great are, but first of all, I don't think that uh, West Ham will lose two games in a row with a high margin. Like, they, have, we, we, they will not uh, suffer two heavy defeats in a row. You, uh, do, you do know we've conceded 30 goals this season. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> but, I mean, you did, but... Uh, you, I think West Ham will come to, 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 to play City way, knowing that what they are capable of, knowing that they cannot play open game with them, and they will have to adapt their tactics accordingly. Uh, looking at the odds and at, at the lines, I mean, I see there is a massive value, I mean, in this game. Uh, massive value of, I mean, the, the basic Asian handicap is 2.75. Uh, I've picked the safe option. For people, and that's plus three Asian handicap on West Ham. It's one point six seven. Uh, I mean, even it, even if you consider City as heavy favorites, even if you think that they will win, uh, you still got to bet one if if they win by two goals. If they win by three goals, it's it's a push. So massive value there. Uh, I think personally, yeah, it's uh, an, it's an interesting sp- spot, uh, Johnny, because. Um, since 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 I started making the, the the pro tips, the videos on Asian handicaps, I've been following them on a lot of matches, and I think in three out of the last four matches, City haven't covered the handicap that they've been given at all. So either the bookies are getting it wrong, or, or mm. something is amiss here, you know. So it's a, I, I think it's a good yep. thing. So, to be honest, personally, I don't like these huge handicaps, uh, especially a team to cover these huge handicap because. Uh, it, it can be also a matter of motivation. Obviously, we are talking about Premier League, we are talking yeah. about Man City with Guardiola. Guardiola is really good at, uh, motivating his players. At the same time, imagine the scoreline is 1-0, 2-0, 10 minutes remaining. Uh, I don't think, um, with so many fixtures coming up in December, important fixtures, which might decide the way the league will go. Mm. Uh, with Champions League next week, where it's off. Okay, I mean, it's not much to play for, but uh, to me, this match uh, represents the biggest value I found uh, in mm-hmm. this week's matches uh, of Premier League matches. I mean, for me, I'm not confident of Zabaleta versus Leroy Sane at the weekend, and but the only sa- one saving grace could be the fact that Joe Hart's not playing. Um, so we'll have Adrian in goal. He might need to prove a point. I don't see. I I I don't want to touch these handicaps, and West Ham always stitch me up anyway. Um, so both teams to score, no, is 1.67. But West Ham United goals under half a goal is 1.73. Yeah. 
So that seems like, to me, instead of going for both teams to score, you just back West Ham to not score a goal. And yeah. you, you get a little bit more value. Yeah. What does that sound like? Does that sound like value to, because I'm sure Man City will score. And I think the both oh, teams, sure. the both teams to score is whether West Ham will score or not. And you can get more value by backing West Ham total goals under a half at 1.73. And I'm tem- really tempted by that because West Ham's, um, goal scoring record is not great away from home. Um, no. Because you scored twice against Crystal Palace, and you got one against Burnley, but you didn't against Everton, didn't against Watford, didn't against West Brom, didn't against Newcastle, didn't against... Ma- uh, yeah, this season. Um, and you got two against Southampton. So, I just got a feeling, you know, um, are, are you going to are you going to puncture the uh, Man City defence? I don't think so. So, no. That will be... I can't see it. That will be my bet. Under half a goal, uh, under half a West Ham goal at one point seven three. As you probably know, podcasts grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Protipster Football Show by telling your football match friends all about our podcast, or by leaving a review for us on iTunes. Lads, change the subject quickly. Um, Dan, yeah. who, who the World Cup draw is tomorrow, so by the time people are listening to this, uh, it might already be gone. Although, I suppose. Most people get this on the on the commute in the morning. Uh, who do you want in the draw, England? Um, who do I want? Um, well, I was looking at um, a friend of mine is head of communications for the FA, and they had a um, like a a draw um, uh, like a mock a mock draw today, and in that we got uh, France, ooh la la, uh, Saudi Arabia, and <laughs> I'm trying to remember who the other one was. Tunisia. Tunisia, yeah. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do, pig. <laughs> um, we, although, although I saw an argument, a friend of mine, uh, made the argument, England aren't gonna win it. So let's just have some like really fun grudge matches, so let's get Argentina. <laughs> and also Australia, <laughs> Australia would be a good match. Uh, yeah, that'd be a good one. So, um, I, I can't, I'm kind of torn, but yeah, um, France, Tunisia, Saudi Arabia, that'll do, thank you. Alright, fair enough. Martin, who do you want? I don't know, really, it's a tough one. I mean, it'd be interesting if we had Russia, just to see how the fans get on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you um, seen, like, a lot, there's a lot of media already coming out with, uh, with, with, with articles about Miguel Delaney in, in the Independent had one today. Yeah. And he's over there for the draw. Well, I suppose there are lots of journalists over there for the draw and they're talking about it. But I thought something was interesting as well that, um, a lot of Russian police have gone to England this weekend to, yeah. uh, to learn about how the, the matches are stewarded in England. Oh, wow. I thought that was interesting. Right. It's quite interesting. Yeah, maybe the Spanish but... police should, uh, should, uh, take lessons from them because they're, they're just a horrible bunch. They, they uh, <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't get into that. But they're terrible. Spanish police. I don't know. I, speaking as a, a person who's been to away games in England, uh, well, look, look at Brighton versus Crystal Palace. Mm. Look what a, look what a horror show that was in the end. So there were Crystal Palace fans. Yeah. Much away from the stadium. Dumped on any, any train to London. Regardless of destination, regardless if people had a match to get or not. Yeah. I don't think they couldn't get in for 45 minutes, could yeah, they? Yeah, I don't think English policing's perfect, but, uh, I'm not sure I'd recommend anyone going to, uh, to, uh, Russia. Johnny, what's your take? Who do you want England to get? Yeah, uh, looking at the pots, I would, for it, for England, I would have a really nice, really nice group going with Russia from pot one. Just, because of just for the fun of it, of playing hosts and how how intense it, it would get. Uh, from pot three, I would get for England uh, Iran <laughs> to get a bit of Asian experience. <laughs> <laughs> and then from pot four, I'm going again into Asia for Japan. And this would kind of be interesting. Yeah, that Japan that could be quite a difficult opponent to, for, for England. I, I yeah. would say. Okay, Iran, so. I haven't seen Iran, to be honest. It, this was just looked uh, as, as, as the best pick from pot three, but uh, I was considering uh, Iceland 
for Revenge of Europe <laughs> as the 16, but that would be maybe <laughs> England because if they would be knocked out again, then they, they, you know. Oh, if I uh, saw that England yeah. again, if that had happened, then half of half of the babies born in Ireland next next summer would all have an Icelandic name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny, being our uh, J- Japanese expert on a J League, tell us because we're we're almost the, or this is the the final weekend, isn't it? What's going on then over in Japan? Yeah, so this is the topic I, I was looking forward to. <laughs> to. Uh, so there's a there's a title contest uh, in Japanese J League when there's a last round of matches this weekend. Uh, Kashima Antlers are currently first. Uh, they are two points clear of Kawasaki Frontale, uh, second. With the last matches played on this Saturday at uh, six o'clock Central Europe time, so that, that's five o'clock UK time. Uh, and basically, so. Because of the better goal difference and head to head, uh, draw is not good for Kashima Antlers, uh, in case Kawasaki Frontale win their match, because, yeah, they got a better goal difference and head to head. So, it makes it even more interesting, because Kawasaki Frontale, they play at home, match against a team called Omiya Ardia. Uh, this team is already relegated, so without real motivation, uh, they are a bit struggling in the league as well, not really playing well. They, they were no one in, in, in the campaign to play pretty defensively, but, uh, well, the tactics was defensive, but not so, so much successful. Uh, I think they won once in last 10 matches, and that was in the, in the cup anyway. So in the league, they're, they're really bad. So, unlike Kawasaki Frontale, who are really good, they're offensively the, probably the best team in J League. They score a lot of goals. At home, they are a team that can, can dominate the teams, even even when they play against the opposition that can park the bus in front of the, their goal. They are quite dominant. Uh, they win regularly at home. They they are motivated to score more goals. So it is expected that Kawasaki Frontale would win their game against uh, Omiya Aria, which then would uh, make Kashima answers who are playing an away game to Iwata, Yubilo Iwata. That's a, that's a, that's a team name. Uh, that makes Kashima Antlers that they will have to win. Which is not so easy because, uh, they play a team that currently, uh, lies on, on the fifth place of the, of the standings in J League. But it, but a very decent team, uh, with, uh, decent form and who are able to put up a good performance at home. They will be motivated. Uh, because they can still climb up to fourth, uh, fourth place in the standings, which doesn't guarantee them, uh, Asian Champions League spot, but, uh, still would be a huge result for them in the campaign. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a difficult match against Kashima. Kashima had the chance to sneak the title last week, last weekend already. They had a home game against Kashima Reisol, but couldn't, uh, ha- handle the pressure. They only drew nil-nil. So now the pressure is even bigger going for a away game and know, knowing that most likely they will have to win. So to to sum up this in a betting perspective, uh, I'm I'm picking two predictions. So Kawasaki Frontale to win by margin of two or more in their match. The odds are 1.74, but the odds are dropping rapidly. So I think they were to win for Kawasaki Frontale to win. Uh, it, it might be a good option for uh, accumulators, like the straight Kawasaki Frontale win, but that was one point about 1.3 yesterday, so today it, it's even dropped to 1.2 or even less. But this Asian handicap to win for Kawasaki Frontale to win by two or more at 1.74 uh, looks 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 good to me. They will go for goals. They will they play uh, Omiya Ardia who are not motivated at all, so I expect them to to win quite easily. And then, also for, to, to touch the other game, which is important, Kashima Antlers, even though what I said that they play a difficult opponent, they are the super, mo- they are super mo- motivated to, to win the league. Obviously, they've got their two points ahead. So, I've gone for safe option there. I've, I've gone for Kashima Antlers on zero Asian handicap at 1.51, but I would recommend low, lower stakes on that one. Uh, it, it will be a tough game for them, but I don't expect them to lose in the worst case to, to draw because in a, 
Oh, obviously, they will probably know the result of the other game during the match. I mean, nowadays it's difficult not not to know. But but uh, yeah, this is my insight, short insight into the exotic J League, which you don't get to see very often in Europe. Magic, very good. Oh, oh, they they, they do stream it on. I, I, well, I know they used to stream it on Bet365 anyway. I think they still do, don't they? Yeah, yeah they still. They still yeah. Stream, yeah, yeah, they still do. Very good. Yeah. So, so you can. Yeah, you can you can find the predictions in my uh, prediction profile. I think Paddy will then link it with the podcast. Uh, all our tips. How how much pressure is on the Kashima Antlers? When was the last time? I'm not clued up on the J League. Just, just wondering when the last time they won the league was. Uh, I can't tell you from from the back of my head when they when yeah. was the last time they won the league. But uh, yeah, the pressure is the, talking to talking to some uh, fellow colleagues from Japan. The the the, the, the pressure is huge. Uh, the pressure was already in the last game against Kashiwa Racehall. They kind of expected them to, 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 to already take the title and win it. They, they drew nil-nil, but what's more worrying, they didn't really have chances. They didn't really look, uh, I cannot say that they didn't really look good, but, uh, but they didn't, they were not so convinced, convincing on the, on the pitch. They played a team that uh, was without real motivation again. Kashiva Racel are, th- I think, on fourth, but cannot couldn't really climb to third for the Asian Champions League spot. Um, so yeah, the pressure now, now obviously now with the away game and playing in the last last um, last match of the season. But looking now, yeah, Kashima are the actually the title holder, holders from last season. So yeah, right. Yeah, there's, so, there's, yeah, there's a lot of difference. Uh, Kashima have won the J League eight times since '96. Kawasaki Frontale have never won it. Wow! Never. So that's the difference. Um, and so therefore, I am hoping Kawasaki win it. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. obviously, I'm hoping <laughs> that now. <laughs> right, well, thanks for that, Johnny. Look, I know you you have to head off. So if you would just want to give the listeners your uh, your your Twitter profile and that before you go, please. Yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter, Prodips to Johnny, and you can follow me on uh, Facebook, uh, Prodips to Johnny as well. And you can follow me on, most importantly, on Prodipster.com, my profile, Prodips to Johnny, with all the latest tips from me. Magic. Thanks, Johnny. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks, you guys. Right, lads. Uh, look, there was a couple of European matches I want to talk about as well. But first, uh, I would like to talk to you, lads, being the fine Englishmen that you are, about <laughs> uh, this... Uh, English management system and there was an article you shared uh, in our group Dan about how Germany has kind of embraced uh, the idea of, of a young manager even though okay let's let's leave your pint out, out of this because he you know increases the average of the German uh, manager <laughs> yeah, he's ancient well I suppose he's not that old 72 but he's pretty old for manager but uh, they have there's a lot of young managers uh, under 40 in the Bundesliga Whereas in, in, in English Premier League, there's a lot, a lot of, you know, a lot, a lot of managers who are well above that. Um, and I know you mentioned it earlier, Dan, about it's, it's a safety first approach. But, um, I don't know, like, is, is, is a safety first approach, it's, it's, it's never going to, you're never going to improve living like that, are you? It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like having conservative governments all the time. A country can never go forward. If it just, if its plan is to stay the same. Ooh, political. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I do agree with you though. I, um, I, I think Germany as a whole, um, has evolved as a football nation because of, uh, you look at their, their younger players as well. You look at how many younger players playing, uh, play in Germany. Um, they've, they've got this real, I, I read an article and I, I think this is, a, this is really true. Um, that you look at these young managers like Nagelsmann, um, they, they, they're not really former players. You mm. know, they might have played, got a really bad injury, but then they've gone into like, um, they've gone into some sort of teaching and that mm-hmm. sort of thing and then gone into management. Yeah. And they were saying that, um, maybe. Like Mourinho and, and Brendan Rodgers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, instead yeah, of, true. Graham Potter as well. Graham Potter, yeah. I, instead of going through like the, just hiring a former player, because, <laughs> um, you know, because they used to play the game, hiring someone who actually has a, a managerial kind of a temperament. Mm-hmm. And I think, I, I can see arguments both ways. Like, um, on the one side, I look at um, someone like Nagelsmann, and I'm curious at how 
he commands respect from players who might be older than him. You know, um, like I was thinking, if Bayern Munich who have got hikers, I can't pronounce his name. Sorry. <laughs> yup. <laughs> yup. Yup. Yeah. Um, you know, if you've got someone like Frank Ribery, is he going to listen to his thirty-year-old manager? Uh, that's the thing. But on the flip side, um, I look at, and I'm sorry, Martin. I look at West Ham. I look at Everton. I look at <laughs> uh, West Brom hiring the same old tired managers. And I wonder if they're just, yeah. they're just firing the roundabout up again. And my own team's guilty of it as well. You know, we took in Harry Redner and it was an absolute disaster. <laughs> I mean, I will admit, I, I, I really do detest him as a man, as a, as a person and as a manager. <laughs> I, I, I can't deny that. But what, what did he do? He, he, um, he annoyed the players by slagging them off publicly, signed 14 players in the window of whom most don't play. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and buggered off when, when we lost six on the base. He did keep you up though. To be fair, um, I think any manager we'd have brought in would have because the players stopped yeah. playing for Zola. Um, oh, if, fair enough. which is that respect thing again. You know, I, I think I think you've got to um, you've got to as a manager, you've got to be able to command respect from your players. But I think it's also good. To, and and there, there are some examples out there. I mean, Sean Dyche is a good one. He's forty six though. Um, yeah. Actually, um, I have to go back to my own club because I know my own club. Um, our under twenty one manager is a guy called Richard Beale, and he's he's younger than I am. He's in his thirties. And, um, he has massive amounts of respect from players. Um, he has brought through, uh, Nathan Redmond, Jack Butland, uh, Damari Gray, to name three top quality Premier League players now, who yeah. all will tell you that they owe their, uh, their, their, um, um, their form and what they've learned from people like Richard Beale. And, I know that my club uh, are actually, uh, when they hire, when they've been hiring new managers, say, oh yeah, you can get rid of all the coaching staff except him. He stays. <laughs> and I don't know if he'll ever take the top job. I don't know if he's even interested. Um, he was only ever a non-league player, but he's evidently, he's a, he's a, pro, a UEFA pro licensed coach and he has respect to the players. And it's this, it's this um, respect thing. Um, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know if there needs to be a change in British football. But I don't think that um, English, uh, the English national team, and I don't believe yeah. that um, some clubs in the Premier League will, will change for the better until people start to embrace the fact that just hiring the same managers, is, is um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same results. I think it's... I actually think it could well be down to money as well, because people yeah. are scared. They don't want to get relegated from the Premier League, which is, you know, it's mega bucks. So they they bring in these Sam Allardyce's and that just to keep them up. Yeah, Whereas, it, is, it is. You know, it is really about that. I, I, I mean, I looked at. I, I made a list in there um, of the managers. Did you shake it twice. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> for, the, for those who aren't who who haven't seen what I look like, um, I have been asked to play the office Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, so yeah, um, but I, I, I did make a list and, uh, I know Nagelsmann, Tedesco, uh, the guy, at Schalke. The yeah, um, yeah, he's young as well, I can't think of his Augsburg, name. Augsburg, Mainz, and, and like some of these teams are like small teams, like. Thomas you, Tuchel is out of job and he's on a young fellow as well. You know, they're, they're, they're only small yeah. teams in the Bundesliga yet they're, they're, they're willing to go. With younger mm. managers, yeah, it's weird because I, I was, um, I went to the Hamburg for those days, and I went to Hamburg versus Hoffenheim at the weekend, and for me, it looked like Nagelsmann didn't have a clue what he was doing. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> they're, they're devoid of ideas. Like Hamburg, obviously struggling, smashed them three 0 and didn't didn't really make any positive changes. I, just, I didn't really understand what Hoffenheim were doing that day. Mm. I meant to ask you, and I didn't yeah. ask you um, uh, before. You went to see Hamburg versus Hoffenheim. Did you see Hamburg's 17-year-old Wunderkind? Uh, um, is that the guy that wears number 40? I can't remember his name. Uh, give me two seconds because I can't remember his name either. Um, all I know is he's 17 and he's, uh, yeah, number 40, Jan Fieter Arp. Yes, he played and he played really well. He's supposed um, to be the next big thing. Two goals in three um, Bundesliga games at Hamburg. 
Yeah, he played really well. I think he only played about 75 minutes or so. He got taken off, but he, yeah, the, the Hamburg fans seem to love him. So it's one of those, whether he, whether he stays loyal or whether he goes on, you know, Bayern Munich, snap him up or, or, or someone like that. I think though, lads, I think a change will come in England because do you think so? They're running out of Who is there though? No, it, who it, is it, there in England? It, so, it's not really a case yeah. of who, who there is yet though, but I think it's more of a case of that, that, that they're, they're gonna see what's happening in other countries and, and realise, okay, we're missing a trick here, we're doing this wrong because like, if they're, like Sam Allardyce is gonna go to Everton now and okay, he'll be there for what, two years and then he'll get fired mm. again and Everton will have to pay out those millions. The same will happen with Pardew, it'll happen with Pulis and it just goes around and around and around and I, su- I suppose the problem is is that the clubs are getting paid so much money now they can afford to do this. <laughs> but if the money ever yeah. starts to go down, then they're going to have to become a lot smarter with with who they're hiring as managers. I think it will change because it's I mean, mm. it's just a joke at the minute. I mean, it's kind of like there's hardly there's hardly a point having a manager sometimes. I don't know if he, if he's ever read that book. I was at Soccernomics a couple of years ago, and there was a chapter in that book saying that like. It made an argument saying that most football clubs they don't even need managers. You know, if they just had coaches, they'd be fine because on on the field, a manager can't really do that in any way. <laughs> you know, it, it was really yeah, interesting sure. to read, but um, I, I I wouldn't <laughs> agree with it. But but they, but they had statistics and data to to, to back it up. It, it was quite interesting. To um to answer Martin's question about who is there, um just just looking, um not to county, have uh, Kevin Nolan as manager. Oh, yeah. Fancy that. Um, Alex Neil, Preston, I thought he was, he's been alright in the past. You know, I know he's yeah. had, um, up and down with success. Lee Johnson, at Bristol City. He, Lee Johnson actually is probably the one, yeah, out of all the 92 league clubs that I look at and think he's gonna go somewhere. Carl Robinson, he's Charlton. I remember him being really good at Milton Keynes. Uh, How old is Carl Robinson? Carl Robinson is 38. Oh, no, wow. 30, 30, so he's, he's taken the managerial role. Very early, didn't he? Yeah, Gary Monk. Who, um, he yeah, he, he's, um, he's not bad. Um, he's, he's 38. Um, Danny Cowley, Lincoln City. I don't know if you know about them, uh, the Cowley brothers, but they've, they've do, done yeah. a lot. Uh, they've done a lot. And I'll, then, I'll tell you a ra- random fact. I, I used to play, um, for Concord Rangers when I was a kid, and the, uh, the Cowley brothers managed them at one point. Mm. And Marco Silva. Marco Silva. Who's, uh, 40. <laughs> yeah, Eddie Howe's just turned 40 as well, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that, that's why he was 40 yesterday. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wonder, will, will we ever see return to player managers like, uh, you know, uh <laughs> like, I don't particularly like him, but I'd like to see John Terry as a player manager. I don't know why. I think I'd just like to see him as a player manager. Maybe because he'd get booed off every time he got substituted or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, lads, I don't know if you saw uh, on BT Sports uh, the other day, they had um, Frank Lampard, uh, Stephen Gerrard and Rio Ferdinand in the studio. Did you see this? They were talking about England. I did. I did see that. I thought it was I very good. It. I thought it was very good. They stayed, And they were all very frank and honest about it and just saying, you know, why they thought the England team didn't work. And it was kind of, uh, even though, like, and it was really... Especially what Rio Ferdinand was saying about his his relationship with Lampard. You know, they grew up together, played, came through the ranks yeah. at, at, at West Ham before uh, Rio went to Leeds, and and uh, Frank did the awful thing of going to Chelsea, and <laughs> saying that like after that the relationship was totally different because they couldn't really hang out together on England camps because Ferdinand was always afraid that he might give something away to Lampard, and Gerard was the same. He's like, yeah, we we all got on and all. But we didn't, we couldn't hang out because you're so competitive and so focused on, on your own team that you don't want someone to, to get an upper hand on. I, I, I saw, um, someone comment on this, um, cause you remember when Spain won, uh, three tournaments back to yeah, back? Well, this is exactly what, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and they were saying like, Spain obviously it was the same sort of thing, and you've also got like the regional divides in Spain, yeah. but Spain had Marcos Senna, who was not from Spain, mm-hmm. who was completely out of it. Mm. And he was the one, because he's also uh, quite a likable character, mm. quite a, he was the one who brought everyone together. Mm. He was the one who unified everyone. So good on the pitch, brilliant off it. Mm. And I think, um, from what I've seen of football, um, you really need that. You really need not only strong characters on the pitch, but you need one or two people who can really 
you need to try things off the pitch as mm-hmm. well. Who can, who maybe, and, and I, it's really difficult because I, I totally got where Rio was coming from in saying like, I mean, he, he, he was that frank, he kind of hated himself for the fact <laughs> that, that, you know, winning was that, meant that much, yeah. but he didn't want to let down his teammates at Manchester United and he didn't want to put Frank Lampard yeah. in the same position either. Yeah. And it's like, and then he said like, no, we've retired, we're good mates, you know, we hang around with each other, we yeah. go to... But still regret the tournaments. Yeah. You know? And I, I, I've got to say, for the first time in a long time, my heart actually went out. Yeah, I got to say, when, when Jared started talking about him, he said he had a discussion with Coutinho, and Coutinho was saying how he was looking forward to going off and play with Brazil. But mm. Gerard was Gerard was kind of saying that his feeling of going off and playing in England was just nothing like that at all. Um, Do you think we're we're too strict as you know the, the hierarchy in England are too strict because of, you know, some of these stories like oh, your wives and girlfriends can't be with you during a tournament and stuff like that. I th- I think it's more to do with the fact that English players all play in England. Whereas Brazilian yeah. players don't yeah. all play in Brazil. They all play like around the world. So they haven't got that same sort of rivalry. And, mm. you know, I, I don't I, even think it's the rivalry though. I, t- I think the press play a huge factor in it because, mm-hmm. I mean, the English tabloid journalism is, it's, it's the worst in the world for, for footballers. You know, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't understand. Personally, I just don't understand. I, I don't need to know where R- Wayne Rooney has been sticking his <laughs> uh, toes, and some old, you know what I mean? That that kind of stuff. It, 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 uh, and uh, of course, that gets under footballer skins, and and then yeah. you know what I'm getting at. That's that's what I think is 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 a massive thing that works against England. Um, yeah, I did. I, I even as an Irishman, I felt sorry for them watching it. And 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 when he was saying that as well, because like you know, you know the stories from from the Irish camp, how they all get on and they love playing with each other and having a few pints af- after. After a match yeah. or whatever, just having the crack and like. It wasn't always yeah. like that. Though, was it? <laughs> no, but like you need you need that kind of unifying unifying element, and and this is what like what Dan was saying about uh, Senna, he bringing the Spanish team together, and I think someone needs to do that in England to, for the England team and just say, look, we have gotta leave all our crap at the door and just try and win this. I I, I really hope they don't win it. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Look, lads, we're nearly up to an hour, so we we had plans to talk about the championship, but um, I think we'll leave it for the next time. Actually, I oh, know there were there were two European matches. Uh, quick, then uh, I'll ask you for a score prediction. Dan, uh, Napoli, Juventus. No, oh, Christ. One <laughs> nil <laughs> um, Napoli. Uh, Martin. Two one Napoli. Uh, Dan, Porto and Benfica. One uh, one. I have no idea. <laughs> Martin. Uh, go with two on Porto, but I think both teams to score is the bet there. Where are you on Twitter, please, Martin? And Facebook? You can find, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at ProTips.M and I also manage ProTips.EN. And on Facebook, you can find me at ProTips.Martin, three separate words. Dan, where can we find you? Um, swipe right on Tinder. Obviously. <laughs> Sorry, I have to do it every single time. <laughs> you, you set me up, I knock him down. <laughs> um, Pro Tips to Dan on Twitter, all one word. Um, and Facebook.com slash Pro Tips to Dan, all one word. Magic. And you can follow me, Pro Tips to IRL. So look, thanks everyone for listening. You can subscribe to the Pro Tips to Football Show on iTunes or on Android podcast apps we recommend stitcher or player fm give us a like a subscribe a thumbs up or a big old sloppy kiss check out protipster.com as well for some amazing football tips and subscribe to our youtube channel for daily videos previews podcasts strategy videos we'll be back on monday for more football action speak to you then good luck enjoy the football thanks for listening guys don't forget to check out protipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips check us out on youtube twitter and instagram as well All the links for those are on protipster.com. Bye!